So what's going on? Welcome back to another wonderful Towick special, man. I am your host, Arsenio, as usual, man. This is a nice little glimpse into what is going to be taking place this upcoming weekend. Today, we're going over part four, okay? These are the infamous talks. I know a lot of people out there in the world, oh my God, you hate the talks because some of you say it goes too fast, but it's all about context clues. And so today, I'm going to help you in becoming familiar with obviously the restatements of different words and the numbers and the quantities, because I'm telling you right now, man, when it comes down to the numbers and the quantities, those are the questions that you must get correct, okay? So, in saying that, here we go. Let's get into some restatements. Now, for those of you who are listening to my English, now, remember, I'm going to give you a nice presentation at the end of the podcast, at the end of the video, okay? For what's going to be happening this weekend at 6 p.m., just as I did the first TOEIC webinar, we're going to be doing a listening webinar. So if you're interested in this, let me know. And I will give you full details later on coming up soon. So here we go. Now getting into the glimpse of everything. <sighs> Restatements of key vocabulary. So what we have here is a tape script. This tape script is almost identical to what you, the length, the paragraph setup, how everything is broken down. This is what you're going to hear in the part four. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to recite it out loud. Now, obviously, if you're watching the video, you already have, you know, the, the questions and everything right there in front of your eyes and whatnot. But for those of you who are listening, this is going to be really good because I'm going to present you with the questions. And remember, it's all about the content words, right? From the basis of English pronunciation and me having taught and developed so many different uh, pronunciation you know, courses and whatnot, I realized that I'm not always, you know, you're not always going to be able to get every function word, but you must get the content words, okay? The content words are obviously the names, uh, the nouns, okay? We leave the function words out, like the subordinating conjunctions, we don't care about those. The coordinating conjunctions, we don't care about those. The articles, we don't care about those. The personal pronouns, we do not give a damn about those when it comes to TOEIC listening for. You got to pick up the words that are primarily more than five letters long. All right? So it's just like when I learned Spanish. I'm not going to be able to pick up everything you say, but I will pick up the main idea by picking up the content words, just like when I had to learn Thai. I don't understand a lot of things that these people say, but I just pick up a couple of words, I make a guess, and I'm 80% correct all the time. So let me hurry up and read this out. Here we go. Quote, our final speaker today was also our guest presenter at last year's conference. Dr. Harold Abrams is perhaps best known for his best-selling work, Meeting Business Challenges, but his area of expertise extends far beyond the topics dealt with in that book. A graduate of Yale University with three graduate degrees to his name, he is the current chair of economics at McGuire University, and we are delighted that he has agreed to speak to us once more. As well as today's lecture, Dr. Abrams has kindly agreed to join tomorrow's roundtable discussion, which I am sure you will all be keen to attend. So, without further ado, to speak on small companies and macroeconomics, let me present you with Dr. Harold Abrams. <laughs> Who gives a shit? All right, so in saying that, we got three questions now. Okay, basically what I did, oh yes, I show more enthusiasm than the tapes. Okay, I got it. Maybe my pronunciation is more clear than the tapes. Yes, I got it. Okay, and that's because I'm a speaker and I'm a podcaster and I'm so many, a trainer, you name it. I'm many things. But what you got to do, you heard those context clues. And I hope when you were listening to the podcast, pick it up, write it down, or at least make a mental note, obviously, when you're taking the TOEIC test. In this case, it's a podcast. So write it down and just make that mental note. So when you do that, you'll be able to put these questions together. Without further ado, let's get into question number one. Where is the announcement made? Number two, which of the following is not true about Dr. Abrams? Okay, and number three, what will Dr. Abrams do tomorrow? So by listening to that, obviously, where is the announcement made? Okay, 
what is not true about Dr. Abrams, second paragraph, and obviously what's going to happen tomorrow. These are going to be basically within the first two paragraphs, and that's what you're listening for. So if we look at this, where's the announcement made? We need to figure out what the location is by compartmentalizing the information in regards to the first two sentences of the paragraph. Here it says, our final speaker today, ah, they must be somewhere, right? Was also our guest speaker or a guest presenter at last year's conference. Okay, now obviously best known for this, topics, blah, 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 blah. And there it is. That's basically what they say in the beginning. They go on to the second, uh, what is it? The last sentence. And the second paragraph, it said, as well as today's lecture. So obviously, this correlates with lecture and conference. That means they're at an annual convention, right? Although the convention wasn't even mentioned, but it just gives you an idea. We're looking at things, you know, uh, looking at specific words that may have the same meaning. So if you look at a conference and a convention, they correlate, okay? Now, which of the following is not true about Dr. Abrams, okay? Now, obviously, you know, we could make correlations and stuff like that, trying to, like, like, mix things up so that we can understand the hidden meaning behind things. So what may not be true about Dr. Abrams? Well, let me hurry up and read this out. We are delighted that, okay, I'm sorry. First sentence, it says, a graduate of Yale University with three graduate degrees to his name. So... And B, he has fewer than three qualifications. So when you're actually looking at these questions, you have to make it true for what the question is, right? So what is not true about Dr. Abrams? He doesn't have more than three qualifications because he has only three graduate degrees. So you're kind of like, you're, you're, you're kind of looking at this from not like, uh, what is it? Not devil's advocate, okay? But you're looking at it from a different vantage point as, okay, what is not true? Okay, let me try to reword this and make this not true. So you're looking at it from like the, deve uh, like the publisher's perspective because he's the one that actually writes these books and these questions. When you start thinking like them, you're on the next level. And this is what's being asked here. So what will Dr. Abrams do tomorrow? Let me read this out. Dr. Abrams has kindly agreed to join tomorrow's round table discussion. So the round table discussion, what is he more than likely to do tomorrow? Join the round table discussion. What's another word for a round table discussion? He's going to take part in some kind of perhaps a seminar. And here it says take part in a seminar, right? And so again, what we're doing, we're flipping it and we're using synonyms to like change it, okay? Like convention conference, round table discussion seminar, okay? Fewer than three qualifications, okay, he has, you know, that's basically the answer to that and what is not true. So, in saying that, I know there's a lot that's, you know, there's a lot to be said in this little opening part, but I just want you to follow me because what I'm doing, I'm going more down like a deeper, how do I say it, a deeper understanding of what should be asked for you. I'm going way next level because sometimes these keywords and these things fall on deaf ears and we're never able to pick it up. So what I'm going to do is you're going to listen to three sets of sentences, okay? And you're going to obviously see, number one, part of the shipment was damaged. What is it in A, B, or C that has a similar meaning with part of the shipment was damaged? Number two, they started the job a month ago. What in A, B, and C has a similar meaning with that statement? And then number three, Mr. Holmes has been a huge help to the team. You guys get what I'm saying? So let's listen to a couple of these and we'll break it down. Unit 18. A. Focus. focus. One. Language building. B. Building. Number one. A. Go. The pots weren't on the ship. B. Now, here we go. Stop it. Number one, the parts weren't on the ship. Number one, as the statement is read here in the text, as you guys see in the middle of the screen, it says part of the shipment was damaged. So the parts and shipment, we have obviously a countable noun and an uncountable noun. Okay, we're talking about something that isn't even there, not something that is damaged. 
So understanding that passive verb and okay, hold on. It wasn't even on the ship. So how could it be damaged? That's the correlation for you to hurry up and say, okay, A, no, let's continue. Some of the boxes were broken in transit. Okay, so here we go. B, some of the boxes were broken in transit. Broken and damaged correlate. Okay, boxes are the shipment. So part of the shipment, some of the boxes, some and part, boxes, shipment, damage, broken. One, two, and three. That's how you break it down. Let's listen to num uh, letter C. C. The customer must pay for the damage. Ah, so it has nothing to do with the customer, and the customer isn't even mentioned in the statement in number one. So C is out. All right, so now let's go into number two. They started the job a month ago. Number two. To go. Here we go. A. They estimate it will take another month. B okay, wait. We're talking about someone starting a job. She said they estimated that it will take another month. It's referring to something entirely different. The main focus here is someone starting a job a month ago, not it. You see? So there's a pronoun differentiation there. We have it and what she said and they and what is written. No. Let's continue. The job hasn't started yet. Okay, here we go. The job hasn't started yet, meaning it has not begun. Number two, it says they started the job a month ago. So if it hasn't started yet and it's in the future, and this one has already been running for about one month, completely total opposites. So C is the answer. Let's see how they broke it down. C. Work has been going on for four weeks. Okay, so a month, four weeks has been going on that's present perfect continuous so this is a different way rather than saying they started as a past simple she said the work has been going on using the present perfect continuous obviously indicating that for four weeks so four weeks prior to that was a month ago up until now it's still continuing that is your answer does that make sense they say it in different tenses to throw you off Okay, don't always expect to hear something in the past simple, although it is written like it or in the what don't expect that the tense that you see is go is the tense that you're listening for in the answers. Does that make sense? I'll say it one more time. The tense that you seen that you see is not necessarily going to be the same tense in the answer as you have just heard. The past simple is number two, right there in the middle of the screen. However, the answer was in present perfect continuous. So if we're looking at number three, it says, Mr. Holmes has been a huge help. We got present perfect, followed by obviously the noun phrase. But remember that it doesn't necessarily mean that the answer is going to be in present perfect form. Okay, so he has been a huge help to the team, meaning he has helped the team a lot. So here we go. Number three. Number three. A. Mr. Holmes has done many things to support the group. Okay, so here we go. Mr. Holmes has done, so in this case, present perfect, present perfect, present perfect, present perfect, has done many things, okay? to help support, or to support the team. Help and support are synonymous, okay? So that is as close as you're gonna get to any answer, but let's listen to the other B. Mr. Holmes is a very large man. Okay, so Mr. Holmes is a very large man. So if we're looking at number three, we're talking about the help. The help is the main focus. Not the adjective in terms of him being a very big man, meaning a very fat man, right? The focus is not Mr. Holmes. It's what he has done in terms of helping the team. Not him being a large man. That is not the focus, all right? So, in the last one. See, Mr. Holmes scored many goals for the team. Ah, Mr. Holmes scored many goals for the team. That means football. That is absolutely, completely way irrelevant. 
So take that out of there. A is your answer. Get what I'm saying, people. By the way, do you guys like my little pink little line over here with the speaker? Freaking sexy. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I'm glad I broke it down that way. So let's keep it rolling. Test tactic. Choose the correct number, quantity, answer. So here we go. If we look at this, how many boats will join the event? We have 14, 17, 35, 70. We're looking for numbers, but they could be in word form too. So let me read this out. So obviously they would say, okay, look at the numbers. I see 14, 270, and 3,500. Okay. We're looking for the how many boats will join the event. So if I look here, the Jamestown Boat Race, or if I read here, the Jamestown Boat Race starts Saturday afternoon at 1,400 hours. That's 2 p.m. Of course, with 70 racing boats competing this year for $3,500 in cash prizes. This is sure to be one of the best or one of the selling events of the season. Spectators should try to, who cares? Okay, do you guys get what I'm saying? So how many boats are competing? I heard 1,400 hours, it's not referring to boats. I heard 2 p.m., it's not referring to boats. However, I saw the quantity 70 before racing boats, and that directly correlates with the how many boats. So D is the answer. This is how you follow the discussion, people. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna underline some of these keywords, okay? As you guys see on the screen, I'm gonna say it out, out loud for you guys who are listening to my uh, TOEIC podcast. Um, and so what we're going to do, we're going to listen to the best, well, we're going to listen to the tape script and that well, we're going to listen to, we're going to listen to the damn audio. Okay. And then after that, we're going to see how we could dissect this using the technique that I had just given you. Okay. So it says number two, how many salvaged items are on display? Salvaged items on display. Okay. A, 19, B, 90, C, 150, 150, or D, 200. So remember, items, display, items, display. Compartmentalize the information. Make sure you get the quantity along with the uncountable or countable nouns that will be preceding or subseding, subseding, preceding, who cares? Yeah, whatever, before or after. So here we go. Two, test tactic, C. Oh, baby. Spectators should try to get down to the Jamestown Marina early to get a good place to watch the action. Pre-race events include knot tying contests, tours of the 90-year-old tall ship Columbia, and a chance to see 150 artifacts recently salvaged from a 200-year-old ship from the Jamestown Harbour. Gates mm. open from 9 o'clock. Parking is limited to 200 cars, so latecomers are advised to take public transport. Number two, Ooh, how let's many, go back, try to baby. get down. Hey, there's a lot, there's a lot. But were you able to compartmentalize in your mind? Let's do it. I'm going to do it for you. To the Jamestown Marina early to get a good place to watch the action. Pre-race events include knot tying contests, tours of the 90-year-old tall ship Columbia. 90-year-old tall ship Columbia. And it said tools. Okay? Now... It, we, it didn't mention anything about items being on display yet. So keep that in mind. 90 year old, okay, ship. Let's continue. And a chance to see 150 artifacts recently salvaged from a 200 year old ship from the Jamestown Hot. 150 artifacts, that artifacts and items recently salvaged from a, Jane, was a Jamestown ship. Or a 200-year-old ship. Is that what I heard? Let me go back. 50 artifacts recently salvaged from a 200-year-old ship from the Jamestown Harbor. A 200-year-old ship from the Jamestown Harbor. 200-year-old is a ship that is one. It's a singular noun. We're talking about items. So if you don't understand the word artifacts, understand that he said 150 artifacts that were recently salvaged from a 200-year-old ship in Jamestown, okay? So I put 150 artifacts salvaged. There it is. I'm like, okay, well, this is my best answer right here because he said 200-year-old ship. 
he said 90 year old blah 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 and then he said something about 200 cars after gates this. open from nine o'clock parking is limited to 200 cars so latecomers are advised 200 cars so d absolutely not 150 is your answer this is how i do it i listen for the 90 okay what is it referring to 90 year old ship nope can't do that 150 artifacts recently salvaged oh yeah that's everything right there right and then he said 200 year old ship cut that out because we're not referring to a singular countable noun i'm a sing <laughs> singular countable noun yeah okay a singular noun we're referring to Countable nouns, meaning items. That's what we're listening for. So he said 150 artifacts with an S. Boom. That's how I hurry up and pluck that one right out of the sky. All right. So now it is up to you. We're going to be going into tactic practice. Now, for those of you who are following me on IG, the answers and the little cutout of this specific audio will be available on my IG. Okay. So make sure that you tune in to my IG stories and my IG post, all right? So whenever you guys, uh, damn, this is gonna be in podcast form though. For those of you who are watching on video, you're just gonna be able to hurry up and comment down below on one, two, and three, okay? So in saying that, what we're gonna do here, whenever this, uh, I don't even know when this is gonna debut, my podcasts are way booked out. But nonetheless, you guys will know, if you're listening to my podcast, IG, Arsenio ZSL podcast, it's literally the same, tag, Latin phrase, whatever, open introduction, name, okay? You can find it very easily. Follow me there and say, hey, Arsenio, I would like to make a couple of guesses. My voice is a little bit gone now because I was screaming all day yesterday, but who cares? Number one, how many people are requested to attend the conference? One, two, three, or four? Number two, how long does the conference last? A, a couple of hours, B, one afternoon, C, all day Saturday, or D, two days. Number three, how much time off can volunteers expect? A, about an hour, B, about four hours, C, a day, D, two days. It is up to you to get it correct now. I don't know where that accent comes from. Who cares? Are you guys ready for this? Prepare yourself, please. Let's three, go. tactic practice. Questions one through three refer to the following announcement. Before we start today's meeting, I would like to check which of you will be able to attend the conference starting next Saturday. As you know, I was planning to attend myself, but due to a clash with a shareholders meeting, I won't be able to make both days of the conference. I would appreciate it if a couple of you could attend the conference and take notes on the three plenary discussions scheduled for Saturday afternoon. The presentation shouldn't last more than about two hours. I realize that this is scheduled for a non-working day, so I would be open to arranging a swap for those people attending, allowing you to take a half day off another day. If you are interested in this, please come and see me at the end of the meeting. Right. Let's move on to the first point of the day. Number oh. one. I'll let you, How I'll many let you people are requested to attend the conference? I'm gonna let the audio play out for you guys, okay? On my podcast and everywhere else, you have the opportunity. Number two, how long does the conference last? A couple of hours, one afternoon, all day Saturday, or two days. Number three, how much time off can volunteers expect? About an hour, about four hours, a day, or two days oh that is today's lesson people now on to the wonderful webinar you guys are like arsenio <gasps> if you guys like this okay first and foremost share it you rate me on the apple podcast i would appreciate that so much i love you all thank you now follow me on ig do not be scared do not fear i am here okay now that's number one number two if you guys felt like you got a lot from this specific single lesson $5 webinar. It's coming up Saturday. GMT time zone plus seven. I live in Bangkok, Thailand. I've been living in this crazy ass the country for about eight years. Okay. So big shout out to all my Thai folks, but Japanese folks, it doesn't really matter. I love all y'all. Okay. We're going to be doing a one hour full webinar on the obviously TOEIC part four. 
Okay, so if this is troubling for you and you felt like this was a very enlightening session, this is the perfect opportunity for you to join my webinar. So for those of you who are listening to this podcast, oh my God, I'm going to have to post this podcast before, obviously, this Saturday. What am I thinking? <sighs> but anyways, if for those of you who are actually interested in the webinar, you guys hurry up, sign up $5 or reach out to me and say, or Cindy, I would like to have a couple of more details. It's going to be me and everyone else, the audience out there. And it's going to be like a game too. We're going to be doing like one to three questions out of a time. We're going to get some of those keywords down. We're going to see who gets it all the way through, who doesn't. What were the techniques that they use for the people that didn't get it correct? What ended up happening? If you say, oh, it was too fast. It was too this. It was too that. And this is why having a variety of different people from different countries on a webinar and explain it to one another how they were able to achieve it while I'm coaching you through it. This is how we expedite in 10 times your ability to beat the hell out of part four. Okay. So one hour webinar, 6 p.m. Bangkok, Thailand time. That is uh, Brazilian time because I got a lot of Brazilian students. That is 8 a.m. That is 8 a.m. on Saturday. East Coast America time. That is 7 a.m. West Coast America. That is 4 a.m. 4 a.m. That's correct. Now, for my folks out there in Europe, it could span anywhere between 12 p.m. all the way up to about 3 p.m. India, it could be anywhere between what? 3 p.m. to 2.30 to 2 to 1.30. For my folks in Japan, it might be a little bit late, but most of you are night owls. You guys love staying up late out there. Me, I'm an early bird. Yeah, I know. So, just saying that, we're in a perfect time zone. If you guys are interested, $5 to join. And it's time to hurry up and get this going. So guys, in saying that, man, so excited to have brought you here or to have you listening to me. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I will be waiting for everything coming up this weekend. So until then, stay tuned for more. And I'll see you this weekend over and out.